If you're watching this video, then my assumption is that you have either passed your FE electrical and computer exam recently and now want to take on the PE power exam, or you have been exempted from FE electrical and computer exam based on your experience and you want to dive into the PE power exam preparation right away. Either way, congratulations to you for moving on to the next and potentially the final step of your PE licensure journey. In this video, we're going to discuss PE power exam preparation tips for students who have recently graduated and successfully pass their FE electrical and computer exam. But before we dive into the content, I would really appreciate it if you could like this video and click the subscribe button and the bell icon if you haven't already done so. My first tip for you, if you've recently passed the FE electrical and computer exam and a relatively recent graduate is to take the PE power exam as soon as possible if you want to specialize in power systems engineering. Now, the good news is that there are a lot of states that have actually decoupled the PE power exam approval from the four year or five year experience requirements. And in front of me, I have a list of these states and every year it seems that new states are being added to this list. Um, Oregon, Nevada, New Mexico, Kentucky, uh, Louisiana, Illinois, Nebraska, South Carolina, Wyoming, Texas, uh, Florida, apparently North Carolina recently as well. So why do I recommend students who have recently passed FE electrical and computer exam to take the PE power exam as soon as possible? You have the momentum on your side. You have recently passed FE electrical and computer exam. You are in the exam preparation mode. You have the routine on your side that can help you make that transition from FE exam preparation to the PE power exam preparation much more easy. My second tip for you is to understand codes and standards because codes and standards is one topic or one section or subsection within the PE power exam specification where potentially you will be at a disadvantage as compared to somebody who has been working in the field for four, five, six, seven years. And there are a lot of students or candidates who are taking the PE power exam will basically actually fall in that category because still there are several states that require you to complete the four years of experience prior to take the PE power exam or the PE exam in general. So you are at a disadvantage because if you have recently graduated from university and if you are just, uh, if you've just passed the FE electrical and computer exam, you wouldn't have as much exposure to NEC, NFP 70E, NESC and so on and so forth. So you want to make sure that when you're going through the PE power exam preparation that you are paying special attention to codes and standard section. The other reason why codes and standard is so important is because it accounts for roughly 17%, 15 to 17% of the entire exam weightage. So the weightage is very high and you can see a lot of questions on the exam which makes it super important. Now how can you go about learning codes and standards if you really haven't ever used them at your job or in your school? In my PE Power Exam Preparation course, I walk the students through the important sections of the code. These code books are not easy to deal with. Some code books are 400 pages long, some are 500, some are 600 pages. So you first of all need to understand what is the structure of the code. If you know how to read the code, if you know how to navigate between different sections of the code and the cross-referencing, then I would say that more than 50% of the challenge associated with codes and standards you have already overcome learn how to use the tables, learn how to use the rules, and most importantly, apply them to the given scenario because the code problems tend to be scenario-based problems. You have a motor of this size, which is at a, this distance, and some of the load is continuous, some of the load is non-continuous. You have to apply derating factors. You have to extract details from different sections of the code. So how do you actually uh, bring it all together and apply all that knowledge and different information to the given scenario. So that's probably where you are at a disadvantage and the best way to overcome it is by consciously realizing that you, have, you will have to put extra time and effort in it and ideally use an effective exam preparation resource that can help you fast track this process. My tip number three for students who have recently passed the FE electrical and computer exam is to realize that P power exam and FE electrical and computer exam are very different. These are two very different exams in many ways. 
In the FE Electrical and Computer exam, if I can generalize it or oversimplify it, the fact is that that exam tests you on a broad range of topics, starting from math to software and everything in between. If you have fundamental knowledge, as the exam title says, fundamentals of engineering. So if you have fundamental knowledge of these 17 sections, you can actually pass the exam in the first attempt. Now, the other thing that makes FE Electrical and Computer exam very different from the P Power exam is the fact that FE Electrical and Computer exam is really a race against time. You get about three minutes per question, 110 questions, five hours and 20 minutes to solve the questions, uh, which is a tough ask. Even if you're a recent graduate and if you have been taking the uh, exams, in, even in computer-based format, you will be pressed for time. Now, when you compare all of this to the P Power exam, the P-Power exam is focused on power systems engineering. So there's a lot of synergy between different topics. So section one topics would sort of make an appearance in section two, section two will make an appearance in section three. P-Power exam focus in depth. Now when it comes to time, time management on P-Power exam is not necessarily as big of an issue as it is for FE Electric and Computer exam. You get the double amount of time, basically six minutes per question, 40 questions in the morning and 40 questions in the afternoon. You get four hours and four hours. So you can manage your time much more comfortably. But the challenge is that the nature of the topics, given the type of the exam, is going to be very, very in depth. You cannot just skim through the surface, do surface level learning and expect that you are going to see questions where you can just take a formula here and then plug and play. You can just um, look at a definition and answer a question. It doesn't work that way. You have to develop deep understanding when it comes to PE power exam. And this is where I see that a lot of students who get started with the PE power exam preparation right after FE electrical and computer exam, they struggle a little bit. It's a little bit of readjustment. The questions are going to be much more deep. The way they are going to test you is going to require very thorough understanding of the underlying concepts. My fourth and final tip for students who have recently passed FE Electrical and Computer exam and want to tackle the P-Power exam right away is to develop familiarity with the NCS P-Power Reference Handbook. Now the good news is that since you have recently completed the FE Electrical and Computer exam, you already know how to use the NCS FE Reference Handbook and you can take that competency or take that know-how over to the P-Power exam. Now in my course, I help students to actively develop that familiarity with the NCSP Power Reference Handbook through the lectures, in lecture problems, through the quizzes, through the computer simulated practice exam. Now when they're progressing through the course, uh, starting from measurement and instrumentation all the way to protection, uh, they are actively using the NCSP Power Reference Handbook and creating that mental map that is going to help them immensely on the day of exam. To summarize this video, I would recommend that you take the P-Power exam as soon as possible, look into the decoupling rules for your specific state. The only area in my mind where you're sort of at a disadvantage is codes and standards. So please make sure that you're using an effective exam preparation resource to prepare for codes and standards. And for the NCS P-Power reference handbook familiarity, again, use an effective exam preparation resource that can help you with that. Most importantly, the P-Power exam is quite different from FE Electrical and Computer Exam and you need to develop deep level of understanding. And if you're looking for an effective exam preparation resource that can help you guys through this P Power exam preparation journey, I would recommend you to check out my P Power exam preparation course for which the link is given in the description of the video below. Thank you.